Hello and welcome back to the room. Last time we left off with this puzzle that has some glyphs on it. And I already have seen some glyphs over, all over this, uh, well, the cabinet. And before we go and look for these glyphs, let's see if we can turn these things on the corners. Because my OCD is kidding me, this bit should be right here. Or maybe they turn if you do something with the glyphs themselves, so let's check that out. I know there's one here. So, oh, this is probably the bit where there's no metal. We can't use it from this stance, but the glyph corresponding to this should be with the empty side in the top left corner. So let's see. Now, did it change? Yes, it did. Well, that's great. Uh, can we, there is uh, something here. That's a circle. Is there a circle in here? Should be. Yes, there is. So that's the left lower corner. Left. Oh, wait. Now we can the right lower corner. We can see it in the top left of our screen right now. That's fair enough. Um, Where was the other one. I know there's a triangle somewhere but I haven't seen it yet. Uh, the square is up here so it should be top right. There. Now we need one more. And that is a triangle with the right bit through it. Now the triangle is right here. Oh, hello. I didn't know you could slide this away. But it doesn't keep in place. Okay, so let's check where you it's the left lower corner. I guess we just need to be quick then. There we are. Now we should be able to open this up. Ooh, there's some nifty things in here. It's a gear. Or rather, a large cog. And an elastic band. I guess this has to do with the mechanism right here. So let's place the large cog right... Oh, we can't. Ooh. Um, maybe I need to place it here. Yes. So there must be another cog somewhere, I think. Or no. It doesn't. Hey, what's this? A small screwdriver. That's exactly what we needed. Unfortunately, it's not a sonic one, but hey, you can't have everything. Let's unscrew this. We need to turn to the left. And we need to do all the screws in individual manner. There we go. Um... Okay, so we have a, an emergency stop. Something that needs to keep pressed. Can we... We can't use the elastic band on this. Can we use this? No. Well, it needs to stop. So maybe we can... We can't turn it off, can we? No, unfortunately not. But there are a few other gears that are meant to be placed in this direction, so... Ah, it moves about. Can we take this off? I don't think we can. So there should be more gears. Right. Now we can put the other mechanisms in working order as well. So we opened up the, the section on the top here last time. Let's see if there's anything special with the eyepiece. No. Alright. Um, this looks rather complicated, but we don't have anything that fits into this. So let's check this thing out from all possible angles. Guildford, England. Non est... At Astra Molesteris V. Or Terrace 
six. Fair enough. Let's see what happens if we press some buttons. Um, nothing much. Uh, maybe if we press this at the correct moment. Does it, does it lock into place? Yes, it does. Okay. A peculiar folding key. Well, we need to. We know where we need to use that. There we go. Let's see a drawer with an oddly shaped indentation. Well, it's not oddly shaped because we already know what it's for. We need to fold this some kind of way around. We can't turn the key around apparently. So let's see. The top needs to be uh, T shaped. Mr. T will be happy about that. And then we have the sides, which are just... Oh, I don't, didn't want to zoom out there. Thank you very much. Um, oh, maybe this is the solution, that we need to use the two things here in the same area. It's the wrong shape. Oh no. Oh, the upper bits need to be on the inside, so that I need to... Turn it the other way around. Oh, hello. <laughs> now it tells me. <laughs> there, now it should work. Yeah. Another gear. A medium sized cog. Well. Should help us out. Let's see. Uh, we could use it over here. It feels like I can take this off again if I need to. Well, that's handy information to have. Let's turn this and see what happens. Hey, it's another one. Another medium-sized cog. That's great. I guess this is the last one since we have a third slot, but we also need to be able to take them off again. Or maybe we need them for the next puzzle. Okay, so this does nothing. I don't want to change anything about this cog. But I can do this. Which doesn't help me whatsoever. So what do we need the, the other cog for? Hmm. We can't take off this thing, unfortunately. Otherwise we could just have uh, cheesed our way through this. And... This bit still does nothing, I would say. No. Alright, so there needs to be another puzzle that we... Oh. Hold on, maybe we can... Use the elastic band. I figure that's the solution. Because they have those nice... Protrusions. Come on, you know you want to. There we go. Right, so this needs to work. Yes, nice. So we set this in motion. What's happening? Oh, this gear is spinning now, of course, so now we can just do this. And we get all the star signs. And something that's hidden inside it. Hidden inside the swan. Which we covered in our turbo review of Aurora Nights. A long narrow steel tube. Fair enough. What do we need to use this for? Looks like some kind of key. And I saw something that we might be able to use this on. So let's try. No, this isn't it, I think. No, maybe there's another place at which we can use this. It's hard to tell what exactly, but something is missing here. Right. Then we would be on a quest to discover 
what we need to put in its place. Hmm. Maybe we can change something about this thing. Oh, we can slide it out. Some kind of small key. And there's also some kind of photograph inside, apparently. An old photograph. Of, I guess this is the house with the attic that we're in. Uh, we have a small key now. Maybe we need to use it here now? So I tried to use a tube as well, but... Yes, there we go. There's the hexagonal glyph again. Maybe we can... Aha! So let's... Turn this around. Hmm... What does it look like again? Two protrusions here and half a hexagon. So we need to look at it from this way. Or from the top rather. There we are. Nice perspective puzzle and now we have a shield. With one of the signs. It looks like a P with an axe through it. So Pax Christi, but I don't think it is that. Huh? Let's take the small silver shield and... Well, there is only one place which we could use that at. He seems to be holding something, but he isn't. This guy is holding a sword. This guy is holding a mace. And this guy is holding an axe. The defense is also a way of offense. Maybe we need to place it here. And now we have an oval gemstone. And we also found a place where something was missing, but it was hard to tell what. So let's see if the oval gemstone fits inside here. Oh, it's lighting up. I can turn this now. But I wonder what it actually does. Ah! We need to move the dials of the clock. Maybe it's six o'clock. I don't think it is. Maybe we need to put it on twelve o'clock. No, that's not the thing either. Well, then they need to uh, be pointing towards the gemstone itself, I guess. And you need to do another round because it doesn't. Well, it doesn't want to point at the gemstone itself. So where do do where do we need to point? Maybe there's a hint in the old photograph on the back. Rev six o five. So revolve to six and five minutes. So five past six. Hmm. Let's see. There we are. The astral clock retracts. The final sigil opens up. Oh. It is a whole astral thing. Fair enough. We complete this chapter now as well. Pleasing progress, but do you really think you have proven yourself yet? Yes, I do. Because I opened up two of your pesky puzzle boxes. Which in itself were quite fun so far. So, next time, I guess we're getting a new puzzle box. Let's check it out really quick. Loading. Well, this looks interesting. Alright, with this puzzle box, we'll get started in the next episode. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.